dam along the along here to put the tunnel boring machines in. Uh, they said, oh, you can't go through the historic bulkhead. It's a bunch of granite blocks. And in 2007, they said you could do it. Um, you go across the Hudson River Park, they said, oh, um, you have to get a, a, a bill passed by the state legislature to allow you to go across it. Okay, you get a bill passed. It's, it's another one of those things you do. Um, going across uh, the West, uh, West Side Highway, and then this is the Con Ed block. It turns out they were gonna lease this, permanently use this, but lease this for 10 years, and this block for 10 years. So going across these is not an issue. There's a couple of small buildings here. There's a mobile station here where I used to get uh, car inspected. Those would come down, but that's it. This is not Midtown, this is the far west side. And this is Con Ed's parking lot and a toxic waste dump. This is as a sanitation uh, garage and was always envisioned as, as back office coming up, back office infrastructure support for the city of New York. So they said, well, there's a lot of buildings. There aren't, absolutely not. Um, they said the number seven train's a problem under 11th Avenue, it's not. Uh, they said the High Line, I don't know if any of you have been in, but the High Line's being turned into a park. Yes, yeah, uh, right. the lower part, it's, it's yeah. turned into a park. Um, this would be cut and cover, most likely. From here, you would uh, shore up and dig. And this was all reviewed in the draft environmental impact statement. Uh, and then finally, you would go under the Long Island Railroad to like duty shops. And in the, in the 2007 report, they talk about doing the work on the weekends, doing the work at night. Um, that's what happens in New York when you're building stuff in a very dense uh, urban environment. And the last thing here um, is tying into the Empire Line that comes down from Albany. They'd have to change the profile on that, which actually makes it an improvement. And th this is where the building is that, that, uh, that Art Silver, the head of the project, actually testified to the New Jersey uh, Senate Appropriations and Budget Committee and said the building would have to be empty. It was a 40-story building. It's a 20-story it's a building, and it's a bridge over the existing tracks. So the tour was really, the purpose of it was to show people that all these reasons to not go independent just weren't true. Uh, and here's the, this is the Google Earth you see coming right here. And once you get here, you're in the existing, when you leave Penn Station, there's a little bit of daylight, and then you, it disappears. That's this block right here. Yeah. Um, so there's already tracks, there's tracks under, the, under here. It's 2,300 feet, 2,300 feet from here to the river. Where's the far, where's the far like post office? Right here, going here. Here's the post office, here's the annex. That open area is where the control center is, right there. The control the center is right there. You look right out. Uh, Skinel, yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. Skinel, right. Yeah. 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 up in there. That's right. That's right. That's really something. If all these ideas were vetted correctly, what, what prevented the process from working in selecting the optimal solution? Well, having been at the Long Island Railroad, the simple answer, and it's a terrible answer, is that no railroad wants to have to work with other folks because it's it's difficult. You'd really rather have your own sandbox to play in. And I honestly believe that, that what happened it's here- It's a terrible reason, isn't it? It is, it is, it's a horrible reason. Um, east side access, they're building a station 150 feet below Grand Central because Metro North, a sister to Long Island Railroad within the MTA family said, don't you dare come into the lower level of Grand Central. So it was prevented yeah, it, coming up with the actually the real problem. I, I, I'm sorry, right. Dick. No, Paul. Paul, Paul I'm sorry, Paul. Dick. Um, the real problem is there's nobody. When I was at the Long Island, head of operations, a guy named Larry Baggerly, said he'd say, Joe, he said the inmates are running the asylum again. And what you have here is you have a constituent agency that doesn't pay for its capital, that gets free capital, gets subsidized money to run its, its operations. Um, and there's nobody overseeing that process to say, these are the right answers. Somebody asked me two weeks ago, I said, well, is a strong governor the answer to this? I said, no, the last, Corzine was a strong governor. He was going the wrong way. Christie's a, a, a strong governor. It's only because of the money that he's going the right way. So I don't have a good answer. What I do know is, is that we spend so much money doing almost nothing that we can get almost nothing done. Right. And we're about to run out of New York. We're about to run out of capital at the MTA. It's just gonna happen. Yeah. Um, in all these discussions that you've been familiar with, 
has there ever been any mention of the idea of sharing this tunnel with some intermodal freight to get through New York? I mean, the classic problem is a York. glancing comment in the write up. A glancing comment? Yeah, that's it's like one paragraph. Um, Alternative mess. Well, it, some of us, and actually uh, uh, Rick Arena, a, a guy who's involved uh, on corridor stuff for a long time, lived from New Jersey but works in Boston, said, and I, what I've been saying, and we talked about this, the idea of being able to run a, uh, you know, the way the freight railroads run, they have double stack containers. It's two containers stacked one on top of the other, and the car actually, it, it's just like your double deckers. The actual bottom of the car is just above the rail. And off the ends of the containers are where the wheels are, the trucks right. of the cars. And it's like an 18, 19 foot clearance right. situation. There's no way you can do that type of clearance in the New York area. The bridges are too low, even for a station. And so I said, well, what if you just have single stacks but on the same technology? And his answer was, you're not going to get a railroad to do that. Yeah. Um, so one of the thoughts was to build one of these tunnels, the Southern Tunnel, to freight size. And at least you would then get to Penn Station, and yeah. eventually, if you wanted all the to, way to, all the way to all the way Well, when we when the Conrail split occurred around 1998, yeah. a representative of Norfolk Southern came up to the Connecticut Public Transportation Commission, and this is before they had agreed on how they were going to split. And they were looking for our support, and they proposed. He said they proposed to run road railers into New England to New Haven yeah, you through Penn Station. Yeah. This guy, I think, later left Norfolk Southern. I have no idea whether it was because he said that or something else happened. Very good, very great guy. But we yeah. were quite excited yeah. when we heard that. Uh, to, to be sure, uh, insist, if the railroads insist on it's either double stack or nothing, that's trying to it's making the perfect the enemy of the good. And if you're, you know, uh, it seems to me a situation where we face here. I, the, the answer, my answer to you is I don't know enough about this to okay. know the right answer. What I know is that there's no thought of making this work. It was interesting that for a while during Penn Central, they had two regular uh, postal trains, number 16 right. and 17, that ran, used, used flexi-van equipment, the old New York Central flexi-van, which very low clearance. And they ran from Springfield, Massachusetts to Philadelphia every day. These were the, these were the uh, trailers that had railroad wheels as well? Uh, no, you swung the okay. container off at the terminal. Okay. Okay. This carried mail. Yeah. And then I heard it somehow ended because there was, a, and I have no idea whether it's true or not, there was some dispute with the Long Island Railroad because you passed through from the New York Connecting Railroad over the Hel Hellgate Bridge, yeah. which is Penn Central. Pass through a section of the Long Island Railroad at Harold Tower, yep. and then you come into the tunnels, which I guess presumably were part of Penn Central. Yeah, right, right, up, right up here. Right. Yeah. 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 But yeah. I, I was thrilled when I discovered we had a picture of this train in our 1974 regional plan. I'm still there to look at it. Uh, this flexi van yeah. train going through Greenwich. Yeah. And uh, I mean, well, there's nothing. There's what about? There's nothing, there's nothing about Penn Station that says you can't run freight at night or in the middle of the day. There's there would be capacity, but you'd have to have, you'd have to figure out how to deal with third rail yep. um, and bridge clearances, a number of issues. And you were telling me that for a while they ran a service into, uh, I think it's in the Bronx? Well, they the ran a road railer from it. Buffalo to High Bridge in the Bronx. They did run an, exp an experimental road yep. railer train to Penn Station one hot August night. I remember being down there. And they ran it too to, to show they could do it. But they never ran any regular yeah. service.